Bishop J. Drew and Lady Karen Clark Shear, thank y'all so much for coming on American Black Journal. How's the day finding y'all? Great. Thank you for having Great. us. Yes. And, uh, thank yeah, no, you. it's a joy to be with you. Yeah, I'm I gotta tell you, I am so excited about this interview. <laughs> uh we've been doing this series, uh, The Black Church uh, in Detroit for about a year. Okay. And we're getting ready for our special. It's gonna be an hour long. And so to culminate a year's worth of work with Bishop and Lady Shear. Uh, it is a joy, it is an honor, and it is a privilege. So thank y'all for saying yes. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. yeah. So Bishop Shared, I want to start with you. You are the leader of America's, of the world's largest African-American denomination. Wow. The Church of God in Christ, right? How does a J. Drew from Sorrento <laughs> on the west side of Detroit yeah. rise to be the presiding bishop of the Kojic Church? Well, I had great parents. I mean, they instilled in me uh, this um, uh, godliness, form of godliness. And, uh, and I've always, from the time I was in the fifth grade, always aspired for leadership. And, um, and I worked at it uh, to be an effective leader in my school while I was uh, going through school. And, uh, and you know, God, had an encounter with God as a very young child. And uh, I was always very sincere about God and the church. I love church. This is, I'm the, I'm the kid that would uh, gather everybody when we didn't have nothing to do and make everybody have church and I would preach. <laughs> you would play church. Yeah, oh yeah, oh man, yeah. I love church and so um, just to be involved in church was my heart's desire. And, uh, and so I'm excited about what God has done in my life and my aspirations to be uh, in leadership and not only in secular leadership, mm -hmm. but in the church leadership. And God favored me because he knows my heart. Yeah. Talk yeah. about talk about your journey to this to this position. I well, mean, it hasn't been an easy journey. Yeah, of course. Uh, we have had some setbacks, some major setbacks in our personal lives, mm -hmm. and and we've had some challenges as we, uh, you know, fast forwarded to the in our church life. Uh, we've had some real heartbreakers, and but nevertheless, uh, we never lost our faith in God, and that is so critical. Uh, when you're doing the work of the Lord, because, you know, the scripture says, and we know that all things yeah. work together for the good of them that love the Lord and who are the called according to his purpose. So the bad things, the ugly things, the good things, the, the sweet things, the bitter things, they all work for our ultimate good. And uh, I don't, um, you know, we've had some real challenges. You yeah. know, Orlando, we've had some some fought some we had to fight some hard battles when the enemy thought he was uh destroying us so uh, we've had some challenges when you know with my wife and um you know her health and whatnot but god saw us through and that's the that's the major thing i can say is that god was on our side and we're victorious because of our faith in him yeah and that yeah. was sort of the tone of your address i remember when you got elected uh yeah. the, it seemed like the world was watching uh <laughs> your address and that was really the tone yeah. uh that you set when you got up and addressed the church of god of christ in the world yeah lady karen i i gotta ask you uh this man said since the fifth grade he knew he wanted to be in leadership and i heard y'all grew up down the street from each other talk about because i I heard his story. I want to hear your version of the story. Talk about where you guys met all the way to I do and what is now. Did you envision that it would be this? Well, first of all, the greatest decision I could have ever made in my life was saying yes and I do to this man of God. Mm -hmm. um, of course, um, the beginning of our journey uh, of where as he stated, he was friends with Twinkie. And of course, was, she was like a big sister to him. And so to make a long story short, uh, Twinkie came to me and said, you have an admirer. And I'm like, oh, Lord, who is this? <laughs> Twinkie was your wing man. <laughs> that was my partner. <laughs> Twinkie was my partner. <laughs> and when she told me who it was, when she said it was him, 
I said, oh, no, 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 not him. Because I saw him mm -hmm. um, being such a gentleman that loved God in the church. And I, I just saw those great uh, attributes. And I said, wow. I said, wow, that's, I said, and I felt that, to be honest, I just felt I wasn't there yet. Yeah. You know, I don't feel that, you know, because of what I saw in him, um, you know, I, I gave him that respect then, even when we were wow. younger, you know, I just saw it in him and um, make, you know, as we went on and um, when he asked me to marry him, um, we had our ups and downs. We had, <laughs> when he asked me to marry him. No, no, I, saw, I saw your Bishop. mind go right there. He wants to know some of those downs. I I'll know. leave you alone, Bishop. <laughs> <laughs> well, we had those down moments of, you know, I realized, wow, I, of course, was in the singing group, the Clark Sisters, and and when I felt, oh, I'm an artist then, and then when I found out he was uh, doing his trial sermon to be a minister, I'm like, oh, that's a whole different hat that I'm gonna have to wear. And if he becomes pastor, then as we began to grow together, um, and I said yes, and he, uh, became a pastor and I'm like, wow, here's another hat. I'm a pastor's mm -hmm. wife, you know? So um, it's just so many things that I had to, I, I wanna put it right because <laughs> I don't want anybody to misinterpret this, mm -hmm. but a lot of things that I knew um, that as a artist you couldn't do, mm -hmm. which was nothing bad, but as a pastor's wife, you, there's had another, to, you know what I'm saying? There's so, an added layer there. It's a whole nother thing. Yeah. So, but I know I'm, some of my friends said, you know, oh girl, you just, it's oh, so much. And you can't always, everybody won't understand your vision or understand your destiny. And you have to just fall in place of where God has. And I'm glad mm -hmm. I had a relationship with God to tell me it's not that hard. Mm. You know, just respect the anointing on his life and I'll bless you. You'll be rewarded for it. And I've been rewarded ever since I said yes wow. to this gentleman I have. <laughs> and um, of course, you know, I'm I'm at the place now where, you know, um, he always treated me. It, it didn't change when we were dating. Uh, of course, he teaches and preaches. You collect data when we're, <laughs> yes. when we're dating. Yes. <laughs> when we're dating, he treated me like a, a woman, like a lady. Um, and then when we got married, it did not change. Mm -hmm. When he became a pastor, it did not change. All of the elevation, he just continued to as him being my black king, he always treated me like a queen. Okay, and black I, king. I, <laughs> so I, I am absolutely Let her do the grateful. whole interview. I'm gonna go out. <laughs> She's I'm doing thankful. good. I'm thankful. And, and uh, as you, you, know, you were asking, you know, how was this journey? It was a great journey, even during our moments of um, uh, when I got sick. He still was there, you know. He was a pastor then, but he still, uh, honored me as his wife. You know, he didn't um, step away from mm -hmm. being the pastor, but you know, he, the, the human side yeah. came in and he was there for me when the doctors gave up on me, gave me 2% chance. And when we got closer, yeah. even after I was, you know, after I had, I went through uh, my coma. Mm -hmm. And when I was in my coma, I came out. When I found out all of what he began to, explain to me what had actually happened. And I'm like, I took you through all of that. And and it's just the human side of him being a great leader, but yet step out of that and become a great husband. To be your husband. Oh my goodness. It just took our relationship, made it stronger and it took our relationship to a whole nother level. I'm sorry. No. I mean, even dealing with our children, you know, I was glad that, you know, he was able to portray mm -hmm. him being that godly man, even in front of my son, because sometimes that's all they have to look at. And um, I hear them now saying, wow, when my mother was sick, it was amazing to watch my father, you know, not be so involved in the church and then taking away 
from what he's supposed to do at home. Mm -hmm. And he just portrayed a great, being a great man of God, yeah. well-rounded. Your grace for this. Yeah. Your grace for this. My my dad used to say and still says all the time the first ministry starts at home. Yes. And Absolutely. what she just described yeah. personified mm -hmm. that. Yeah. So hats off. That is thank you. An amazing story and the love that the two of you share is palpable even now is in the room. I could yeah. just feel it. I love it. <laughs> yeah. I want to talk about uh pastoral leadership in twenty twenty two. And we know that it looks different from even a decade ago, right? Mm -hmm. What is, Bishop, the pastoral leadership strategy to lead in this generation and to lead in this climate? Well, you know, of course, our church has been affected so uh, dramatically by this uh, pandemic. And what had to happen to the church is we had to shift. We had to see we couldn't, uh, although we couldn't physically touch people, and I this was real hard for me because I'm a people person. I have. Um, I mean, you got love church. for a congregation that you can't touch. Yeah. How was that? It was tough. Mm -hmm. It was tough. I mean, you know, because um, we had to, we had to learn social media techniques, mm. and we had to. Um, and my my uh, two uh, children, uh, Kiara and Jay Drew, really ushered me into that. They, oh, they I know you went the, kicking and screaming. Too. Oh, <laughs> well, it, you know, it wasn't it wasn't that I didn't want to go. It's just that there's always a fear of the unknown, mm -hmm. and th and uh, the two of them being millennials, they made it easier for me to move into that area where we started doing. Uh, social media ministry, mm. you know, and they got me equipped for that. And, and we were able to, our congregation has grown. Uh, You've actually this. seen growth during oh, the pandemic. And absolutely. Wow. Absolutely. Because now we have uh, intensified our um, um, virtual church and the membership of our virtual church has just skyrocketed. And um, I'm in touch with those people all over the country. Uh, the new members, I have a, uh, a Zoom call with the new members and I did, we just did one Sunday. Uh, and I think it was, uh, what, 26 yeah, or something new members, wow. but they're all over the country, all over the country. And what I do is on that Zoom call, uh, hey, Orlando, where are you from? You know, <laughs> I'm from, uh, North Carolina, da 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 da, and then I converse with each of them on that call, and then I'm a very open person. I'm, a, uh, you know, everybody got my cell phone number. You probably got it. I don't. Well, you, you, you get it. And, and my mem and the members all over the country, they text me, I respond, and whatnot. And so, pastoring is quite different in 2022 because you. Before this, you would want to see them in the building. You know, even mm -hmm. Kiara kind of got me off of complaining about people were on their phones when I, before the pandemic, when I would be up teaching and I look at people and I'm like, they ain't paying me no attention. She said, Daddy, our Bibles are on our phone, <laughs> you know? And so I had to, I, you and know, you had to, trans, right. you see what I'm saying? And I had to transcend to that area, uh, yeah. you know, and so it, it is quite different, you know, and then you, you're getting your emails, you're getting your texts, that's all about a pastor and pastor, pray for me, I'm praying for you, hang in there, you know. Yeah, and so the level of accessibility yeah. had to increase in order to effectively well, lead I, in I, this generation. Um, I don't know if, if I'll say it had to increase, it did increase, mm -hmm. it wasn't that it, couldn't have been that all the time. Mm -hmm. Cause uh, you know, everybody in my congregation my, should have my phone number and I answer the, the phone. Ooh, and Lord. if they call and leave a message, I'm going to call you back. So that was always me, you know, but yeah. uh, now I got members all over the country and they are uh, text me or call me and I had to pray for them and whatnot. So I'm, you know, I'm excited that I'm able to, I'm excited, number one, that I've got people out of the city that want to be a part of our ministry. Yeah. That 
That's amazing. That's mind blowing. That's amazing. Yeah. Let's talk about your leadership role with the largest African American Pentecostal denomination in the world, the Church mm -hmm. of God in Christ. Yeah. How significant is it for the leadership of the Kojic Church to reside in America's largest majority black city? How significant <laughs> and historic is it for the leadership to be headquartered wow. right here in the city of Detroit? Well, I'm gonna be honest with you. I never thought about that until you asked me that, but it is key because I've always said that Detroit is a church city. I've said the same okay, thing. Okay, so <laughs> me and you touching and agreeing? Yes, we okay. are. So Detroit is a church city. There's a couple of cities around the nation that you classify as church city, but Detroit is among the top, if not the top. Mm -hmm. Okay, so. Uh, Preaching, uh, singing, it's, it's, all of you it. You see what I'm saying? Yes. And so you got, uh, we, we, we're a church city. I'm, I'm a churchman. I love church. You know, you know, I had before this pandemic and I'm looking forward to going back to it. We had Bible study Wednesday, Friday night service. I had two Sunday morning service and a Sunday night service. <laughs> so, so I'm looking forward to that. However, when it, as it relates to the church of God in Christ, Bishop Mason, mm -hmm. the founder of the church of God in Christ, died in Detroit. Mm -hmm. So mm. it's, 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 I made that connection. He lived and died uh, went with my pastor, Bishop mm -hmm. J.S. Bailey. Mm -hmm. uh, he was my pastor then. And so I feel this connection, the spirit of the leadership of our church is in Michigan. Yeah. You understand? Yeah. Now, I'm going to get in trouble with the other guys <laughs> around the country, but the spirit of leadership of the Church of God in Christ is in Michigan. Yeah. His, his body is in Tennessee. His spirit left mm -hmm. Michigan. Mm -hmm. So I'm excited about um, being the, the eighth in succession which means a new beginning of the Church of God in Christ that emanates out of Detroit, Michigan. I absolutely love it. And Lady Karen, First Lady of Greater Emmanuel, First Lady of the Church of God in Christ. Let's talk about the, the ever evolving role of First Lady, right? It looks very different from my grandmother's time as First Lady. I mean, you sang, you sang Lady Karen, you preach, you teach. Talk about uh, the, the evolution of First Lady in, in your journey as First Lady. Well, I believe that the evolution of today as a First Lady um, has changed for the better. It's for the better. Um, I appreciate the church embracing women now yeah. to be able to speak the word of God to, you know, well, I, I sometimes make a, uh, you know, comic out of it, you know, saying we do that P word sometimes <laughs> we, we preach, you know, yeah. because back in the day, you know, there was some guidelines, sure you know, was. that they had. So um, I, you I preach, <laughs> though, Lady Karen. <laughs> oh, you um, preach. Well, I, I try to I just give my testimony very loud. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of volume, <laughs> but um, I do. I, I believe that God has given us a word, the women of God, but I've learned, we have been taught, I've been taught by my mother, mm -hmm. who was a very powerful woman in the church with in leadership. She taught me to respect leadership. Mm -hmm. And I have learned to stay in my place mm -hmm. as a woman, that's just me, and, um, and to respect my leader. And I respect him as my pastor, even as the chief apostle of the Church of God in Christ. And not only him, but the other leaders and mm -hmm. the other men in the Church of God in Christ. Um, I've learned to stay in my place, not operate outside of, you know, where where um, God has placed us. Mm -hmm. um, he's placed me to be the wife. As, as I stated before, I wear a lot of hats. But I believe that the women has a great, powerful word. And I'm thankful for that, um, you know, because we get up there. And we, You're right. I get up there and I, 
I put a little tune to it sometimes. Oh, Lord. <laughs> oh, Lord. Oh, Lord. I've heard oh, Lady Lord. Karen tune up. And, yeah. and, and Lady Karen, you don't just sing, okay? You sang. <laughs> One of my earliest memories, I'll tell you guys this, and I didn't think about this until I was on my way here, right? Uh, is being on the church bus going to church. And I, I'm an elder millennial, so I'm a little on the older side of the millennials. Okay. And we still had cassette tapes, right? Mm, yes. And we had, and we played out. I tore the tape up, <laughs> the Finally Karen cassette tape, Lady Karen. My mom had it and my auntie who drove the church bus had it. And mm. I wore both of the tapes out. Okay. And at the time, I didn't realize everything that you were saying and singing about. I mean, I was young, six, seven years old. Mm. I was super young. But I remember being fascinated with what you could do with that voice. <laughs> oh, thank you. I'm just like, oh my God. So thank you sang, you, you preach. Yeah. You first lady. You're all of the things. Yeah, I'm all of the things, but I, I I'm glad for this change. Yeah. Um, because I look at my daughter now and she's she's walked in that place of of, of preaching, you know, as wow. well. And and just to see how God has given that gift to all of us. Doesn't matter who you are. Um, God has given a word inside of all of us. And he, that's that's how great God is, is that he can use anybody. Yeah. And so I appreciate even my husband, he embraces, you know, uh, the women's ministry at, at our church. You know, we have a uh, whole lot of my sister, uh, who is one of my mentors, uh, Dr. Dorinda Clark Cole. Oh yeah, she preached too. You know what mm -hmm. I'm saying? So, mm -hmm. and, and I appreciate my husband, you know, embracing that women's ministry so that, because it's a whole lot of other women that have such a word, powerful word. and. I just, I think it's for the better. Yeah, yeah. I love it. Bishop Shear, earlier in the interview, you talked about uh, the ups and downs uh, that came along with the pandemic mm -hmm. as well, that coupled your ascent to leadership in the Church of God in Christ. Mm -hmm. Family has been through a lot, sure. uh, many losses, um, yeah. but uh, you and Lady Karen managed to show up in an excellent way um, as leaders, as bishop and as first lady. But talk about the duality of having to show up as a leader while you're going through your own stuff. Like who yeah. comforts the family that's always the family that's providing the comfort? Yeah. Uh, <clears throat> tough moments. Uh, you know, I lost my mom and eventually lost my dad. Uh, just super tough moments. Um, it was not easy for me. Um, I was having the most horrible season of my life. Um, my wife was there praying for me. I mean, because I was really going through. Mm -hmm. um, my, um, my son had COVID. My daughter had COVID. My brother had it. His wife, his daughter. Uh, everybody seemed like they were getting COVID. And the Lord protected my wife and I, and I, that's not boasting at all. I make my boast in the Lord. Um, but um, I, I'm, I'm going to be uh, transparent with you. Uh, I thought I was going to have to get counseling. Mm -hmm. I thought I was going to have to get counseling. The saints kept praying for me and I gained strength. I mm -hmm. have my moments, you know, um, can't really talk about it a long time. You know, I'm getting better. But uh, the saints pray for me, and um, and I and I, I I put that out there because a lot of times people think that oh you're going to get counseling you ain't of God mm. and I, I so I put that out there mm -hmm. because I I considered it and but the Lord uh, strengthened me through prayer and prayer works but sometimes people have to get counseling yeah. you know and I mean I. Um, my mom and dad was everything, you yeah. know, and uh, and to see what had happened to them, you know, I was, first of all, I was very, I was a very angry man. I was angry. I was angry at the leadership of our country. Mm. I don't mind saying that. Mm -hmm. I was angry at the leadership of our country. I was a very angry black man. I thought that he didn't do uh, what he could have done to prevent 
all of these lives from being lost. Uh, then my faith was challenged. Mm -hmm. uh, my faith was challenged. I stayed on my knees, on my face before God. Yeah, God, you got to help me. Um, and then to just um, know that there were people depending on me to help them get through while I'm going through. Yeah. And so, you know, um, I asked God, I said, you put me here, you got to give me what to do. And, and, and God put me, would help me get to a point, and I say this, um, I, I, I hope this doesn't sound like I'm um, minimizing what I went through, because it's not, but when it was gang time, God came through for me and, you were able to show and I was able to do what I was supposed to do to help other people. And I, it's no way in the world I could have made it without this, this woman here. Mm -hmm. She was there praying for me, ministering to me, saying, honey, you got to do this. God has you here for a reason, da, 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 da. But it wasn't, it was not easy. Yeah. It was not easy. I, I had, I'm, I wrote a book. And um, it should be coming out soon. And the title uh, uh, is About With Doubt. Wow. Because I, I couldn't, why? All I'm doing. As you ascend, still struggling with doubt. Sure. Yeah. Mm. And, uh, and I'm like, why? Why I gotta go through this, Lord? And then you want me to minister to people? You want me to help people? You know, when we lost our first child, uh, that was, that was a very devastating moment at that point because um, we had made such great plans. And then when we lost that child, God told me that I put you in, and I took you through this so you can minister to people who have these losses. <laughs> okay, I got that. So I guess at some point <laughs> he was saying, I took you through this so you can minister to people who have had your losses, you know, it's, it's a recurring theme, but at the same time, it's a very devastating, uh, recurrence. You know, I remember when my, my mother-in-law, uh, passed and my wife was really going through and, uh, and, you know, I was the one that was there to minister to her and, uh, and I, you know, and so when people would come to me and say, oh, you know, they carrying on too much. I didn't know because my mom was still right down the street. Yeah. You know, people have such a, uh, they can be so hard on people in leadership, but we're human. And uh, I had, I'm, you know, I'm being honest with you. I, I don't think I've ever admitted this publicly, but um, I did. I, I considered that maybe, cause my daughter, you know, she's, <laughs> she's Dr. Kiara. You know? <laughs> and she would get in my face and she would say, daddy, you need to talk. We need to see what's going on in your head. What was it? And I'm like, you better get yourself out of mm. my face trying to psychoanalyze me. <laughs> but that she kept doing that. And, and she said, dad, we, you probably, we probably need to talk to somebody, you know, and cause I was going, my brother. You just, you, you know what you just did though? You just freed so many folks Yeah. because we in the church yeah. have you know, we hold on to certain traditions yeah. that really don't really have merit for right, real. Right. Like, you know, wanting to seek a third party for counseling sure. or, you know, anything like that. Yeah. And so for for Bishop, for Bishop Shear to say I was going through and I even considered yes. it and it was my family and it was my daughter that yeah. encouraged yeah. me to verbalize Absolutely. what I was feeling. Yeah. You just freed yeah. so many people. That's real talk, brother. I'm 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 giving you real talk, man. Yeah. 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 Lady Karen, you were right there. Absolutely. You were right there. I was, I was right there. Holding him up yes. and praying for him. Who was praying for you? Wow. Hmm. I believe that the church, our church, Great Emmanuel family, I have to give a shout out to them because yeah. they had many nights of prayers for us both. And I was at a point where I was praying so hard for my husband during that time until I said, okay, Father, literally, you have to take the wheel. It's only so much I can do, mm -hmm. but you can go above and beyond. 
You can tap into that spirit, that soul to soothe him mm. for such a time as this. And I saw God just literally transform him. And I, I could see him you know, have its moments. He have its moments, but he, he would say, okay, I got it. I got it. I got it. And that was a sign. God heard my prayer yeah. and my prayers. As we sing that song, is your praying in vain? Yeah. It was not in vain. <laughs> Was not, and that's all I had to hold on to. Oh, I'm so glad I'm connected to Christ yeah. to just know that you have a connection and that communication. Mm -hmm. If I didn't have that, I don't, I don't think we'd be able to make it through this point. Yeah, yeah. it's and, been a journey. Oh my goodness, it has. And then, you know, you, you're asking this question, which is such a good question because pastors and wives need to hear this encouragement mm -hmm. to know that it's okay to have your moments. Um, I believe that the world loves to see transparency. Yes. Sometimes that could be a tool to, you know, draw them and say, mm -hmm. hey, we went through this, mm -hmm. but know that if God can bring us out of that, you know, he can bring you out even mm -hmm. at a point where we are. So, yeah. I love it. Y'all yeah. trying to make me <laughs> cry. <Yeah. laughs> um, Lady Karen, you wanted to talk a little bit more about the role of the First Lady. Say more about that. Thank you, Orlando. Um, I just want to make a point that they see me singing as an artist all the time. And as you stated, I do, you know, teach and speak the word as well. But our ministry, my husband as the leader of our ministry is totally built off of the word of God. Yeah. And my point I wanna make is that singing soothes the soul, but preaching frees the soul. That's all I wanted to say. Oh, wow. Uh, Bishop, last question. Um, I want you to talk about uh, the importance of the black church yeah. toward the progression and the upliftment of black people, not only in Detroit, but around the world. Sure. What role has the black church played in our past and in our present? Well, you know, in, in the early days, uh, it was the only place that the uh, uh, black America could get, a black American could get their information. Um, they, they, it was the only place that they could get inspiration, uh, the only place that they could get even learning. And so that has helped black America matriculate through some very tough time. And now uh, the church, uh, you know, through the 60s and whatnot, we saw that the black church was very instrumental in politics, it got mm -hmm. involved in politics, in selecting who should lead us in our country. They, some major, as the uh, politicians would say, it was a major uh, voting block, you know, African Americans, and that was influenced by the church. I'm afraid now that uh, with the kind of shift that we've had, that our role is being downplayed. Mm. However, when you get back to it, the first person in many cases that the African-American believes in is the person who is standing behind that pool. Yeah. And that person speaks with influence into black America. That's why it's so important for those of us who speak from that podium to be in touch with God and say what God wants us to say. I've made the statement very uh, uh, numerous times that the African-American Pentecostal church or church environment has now become a group of people without a political home. Mm. Let me explain that. To yeah, you. please. Um, um, we believe in morality, da 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 da. That identifies us with the Republican Party in most cases. Uh, 
because their standards, morality seems to be a little bit more stringent than the Democratic mm -hmm. Party. However, the Democratic Party is interested in implementing the programs that help our people. Yeah. So actually, we have to decide, am I going to vote Democrat or Republican? It, you can't take the, the Republican Party, the Democratic Party, they can't take us for granted anymore because now we've got to decide, is it best for us to decide for the programs for our people or is it best for us or what should we do about our morality mm -hmm. or our standards? I, I say, and I, I'm not being political, mm -hmm. I'm just sharing this with you, I say, that when we go to vote, we're supposed to vote for what's best for the people. Hmm. You understand? Well, that's black folks, uh, communal. You see what I'm saying? And then hmm. when we vote, what's best for the people? Because um, politics is not voting for the pastor of the United States. It's voting for the president of the United States. The president of the United States is supposed to have a responsibility to see after the people. Mm -hmm. Of all kinds. Too, I'm yes. getting too deep in that <laughs> now. You see, but you understand I what understand. I'm saying? Yes. And so, you know, we're not, we're not, we're not voting for the pastor of the city. Mm -hmm. We're voting for the mayor of our city who's going to look out for all of the people. Mm -hmm. I'm going to stop there because you're going to get some mail on that. <laughs> <laughs> well, as one of God's greatest mouthpieces mm -hmm. um, of our time, I, I would love it if we could end on uh, you just giving an encouraging word to folks who need to hear it. It's a hard time. Inflation is up 7%. People are having a hard time going to the grocery store and getting everything that they need. It's, it's, it's a little bleak out there for some folks. And some folks need to hear uh, one of God's greatest mouthpieces. What's your word of encouragement for Detroit in the world? Well, you know, um, I wrote a book, Hang In There, <clears throat> Hang In There, and uh, it addresses some of these issues that we, you've just made reference to. We have to, in spite of whoever's in the White House, the State House, the city uh, mansion, we have to make sure that we believe in God and trust God because God has a way of enabling us to survive regardless of who's in these positions. And so, uh, you know, my, my prayer is, is for the people that you will develop a genuine relationship with God. It, it, it doesn't matter uh, what you've done in the past. It doesn't matter uh, what the generation of your family has done in the past. You have to develop a relationship with God and God promised that he would supply all of our needs according to his riches and glory. You know, God is rich. Yeah. He loaded. <laughs> and so why should his children suffer? Yeah. yeah. Uh, a, a great button on this conversation. Uh, Bishop J. Drew, Lady Karen, thank y'all so much for saying yes. Thank, thank you. you. Thank wow. you for having us.